Thank you so much. Pleasure. Welcome. Ryan Gomez, one of the greatest basketball players of all the time, is Kiberian. It's a pleasure having you with us. First of all, what was the most remarkable aspect in your life and why? We want to, to listen and to hear your story, your life. What yeah, was yeah. the more remarkable aspects? Got you, got you. you. Okay. Well, uh, you know, for me, Ryan Anthony Gomes, born and raised in Waterbury, Connecticut. Uh, you know, I fell in love with the game of basketball at the age of 13 years old. So, uh, you know, that's where my journey, I think, up until this point where we're at today, kind of made me the person I am today. Uh, you know, it was through the game of basketball, through building a lot of relationships. For me, being the person I am, you know, helped me come in contact with you. You know, it helped me kind of come in contact with a lot of people that, you know, helped me, you know, get to this position I'm in today. But basketball is my love, and, you know, it, it done so many wonders for me. It made me reach heights that I didn't think I would be able to reach, you know, back even to getting the college scholarship to the shirt I'm wearing right now, the Providence College. And that, that's where the journey, you know, I think with me being a professional athlete started, you know, me taking my, uh, you know, signing a letter of intent to go play college basketball at Providence, which is known for a lot of Cape Verdeans being up th that way. Um, and I got a lot of support from the Cape Verdean community being at Providence, family members included that I didn't know I had until I attended Providence College. So uh, that started my journey with basketball. And then from there on, you know, I just fell in love with that. And I wanted to continue to see how far the basketball can take me and see if it can provide me, like I said, with the scholarship first and then have a job opportunity to play professionally. I didn't know it was going to be the NBA. Professionally means just doing something you love and getting paid for it. So I was my, uh, my motto was to get the degree and then hopefully maybe I could play professionally somewhere. And I was fortunate and blessed enough to go ahead and make it and get drafted to the NBA. So um, I'm very excited. I was very excited about that opportunity and I'm glad that I was able to stay as long as I was. But uh, family support uh, helped lead to all this. More, most importantly, my mom, I was born and raised mainly important most importantly through my mother um it was single family home it was me and her she did a lot of you know working day in and day out and the only thing she ever asked for me was to do well in school so basketball wasn't like a you know a thing that we knew was going to become you know a stepping stone for me in my career but it was just doing well in the classroom and then um you know all the seeing her go to work every day doing the things she did the only thing i had to do was do that and i checked that off the list and then I started to like sports, and, and that's where the, the love of basketball became. That's good. Nice. Nice. This means opportunity. This is, this is what, one of the questions I have uh, uh, to ask you. Opportunity. Uh, there is a pro proverb in England, in England that say, opportunity makes the men. This is what I was supposed to ask you. What this means to you? Opportunity makes the men. Yeah, I, be I believe that. I believe that. And I got that. I, I knew that you were going to ask that question. So I started, you know, kind of think of that. But I, I didn't know that was, uh, you know, a, a, a saying in England. But I did always use that to my advantage because I used to tell myself, you never know when someone is watching and when your opportunity presents itself. And for me, you know, going back to the high school, even going to high school, when I first got my opportunity to play um, in high school, it was like, this might be my only chance. So I got to go ahead and leave, put my best foot forward and leave 100%, you know, out there and let everyone know that I, I'm yeah. willing to continually to grind and continue to want to get better, to be great at something. So the opportunity is always presented. So every day we have an opportunity, though. It's not just with the basketball. It's every, every chance we get to wake up and do something you love or go out there and your mind is running and you're trying to, you know, do something new. You got to go ahead and put in that hard work and put in that effort and you have an opportunity to do that every day. Every day you wake up, you have an opportunity to do something. And I always use that as my advantage because when I went to Providence College, when I first got my opportunity to play basketball, it was my only chance to show them that I can play at that, on that team. And I did so well in the yeah. first opportunity I got, which helped me become, you know, the all-time leading scorer at Providence and helped me to get looked at with the Celtics and helped me get all these other opportunities from that work. One chance I got in Providence. And then when I get to Boston, you get another opportunity because you get drafted, but then, you know, they finally, they took a chance on you. And then now you got to prove yourself to them that you can play. And then the next game. So every day uh, is an opportunity for you to get better as a person or as an individual. And I think that saying 
is true to form and the opportunity makes the man. Good. That's good. I'm with you. This is important for our youth in, in our days. I think a lot, of, a lot of opportunities they are losing. And in our world, they think differently. They think if they lose this, they will, they will just, uh, you know, win another one. It's not this. Your message, your story, it will be also a lesson of life for, for them. This is why all the, I used to say the each person, a unique story. And the story also, it will be remarkable for other people because they will learn with this and they will see that, yes, it's possible. What you achieve, it was by your effort, it was the opportunity, you didn't lose the opportunity. So this is very important for them. This is a, a strong message that, thank you. This is why we are proud of you. <laughs> let us go and let us talk about uh, Uh, your family and your career. We already talked about your career, but I'll ask you one more question. Talking about family, what does the word family mean to you? Do um, you have how many children do you have? Yep, Who's yep. got a falling dead? <laughs> okay, yes, yeah, so, yes, I have two children. I have two daughters. I have two girls. One, my oldest wow. daughter, her name is Rael. She's 12 years old. And then my youngest daughter is five years old. Her name is Skylet. So, uh, you know, a family meet that, you know, that. Skylar and? Rael. Uh, Rael, okay. Yep. So, uh, you know, family is, is near and dear to my heart because, uh, you know, without the people supporting, like I said, you know, I, my dad is still living, but my mom is the person who helped raise me. And without her, me, without her doing the job that she did with me, I wouldn't have no way to turn and nowhere to go without that leadership and that direction. So, um, you know, family is number one. Now that I have two kids of my own, you know, the only example that I can give them is the example they see every day. And the things that I do every day to try to instill in those things in them that they can be like me, they could be better than me, but they want, I want them to follow, you know, a certain type of criteria. And I got that from my mom, just watching her wake up every day, go to work, do the things she needed to do and ask me to just do well in school. So that's the things I try to pass on to my kids. It's like, you know, you're going to become an adult one day But in this stage, this age that you're at now, growing up as a young teenager, young, young adult, you have to do the right things consistently. So you can be a, a good citizen in this world, a good person in this world, have a good heart. And I, I think those things come along with the leadership that my mom provided. So for me, I, live, I wake up every day just to provide for my family, for my wife and for my kids and for myself, because you, know, you got to have happiness in yourself in order to be, bring happiness to other people. So for me, I try to instill those things in my kids, but they, they mean the world to me. Basketball was my first love. But then when I have a child, you know, I did, when, when my wife gave birth to my first daughter, it was like, I'm the only person I want her to believe in. How so was your feeling that? I have, I have How was your feeling when you saw your, your first oh, daughter? You know, how was you know, your it, feeling? It was, uh, you know, it was one of them feelings that, you know, I cried a lot. You know, I cried a lot. You know, <laughs> bringing someone into this world to help, you know, hopefully resemble yourself. So I just, yeah. just all the things that I want to instill in her, I think all the happiness was just inside of me that, you know, I don't know what's going to happen the next day, the next year, five years, six, seven years. She's 12 now. So now I just look back at, I can remember June 25th when she was born, like, like it was yesterday. So those memories and those things is what I hold on to and what's near and dear to my heart, which makes yeah. me strive to continue to want to do better every day is my family. The love, you know, this word is so strong, the love. I yeah, think love, it, yes, it, yes. You know, it's, it's, something, it's something that is com completely unique and special. Each child, one love. But I think this is what makes us run and say, yeah, it makes, hey, it, yeah, 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 yeah. It makes you strong, it makes you full, it makes you whole, it makes you happy, yeah. you know? So those are the things that keeps me wanting to be better every day is because I look over my shoulder and I got, two young kids and I got my family that's supporting me and I have to show that same support with them and the things that I do every day. How was uh, looking to your career? You already talked about it. How was your experience by being appointed as a player of the year 2015-16 for NDA D-League? Oh, that was good. for you. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm going a little bit back for the basketball. You know, I played, uh, yeah. you know, two years with the Celtics. Boston Celtics, and then I was three years with the Minnesota Timberwolves, and then I was two years with the Clippers. Then I went overseas and I played in Germany for one year. Then I came back and played uh, for Oklahoma City Thunder, 
And then I also went and played for the um, – and went to Spain, and I played in Spain for one year. And then the last thing – and then wow. I went and became a coach. So at the end of the day, uh, I love being a basketball player. I loved playing basketball. <laughs> I enjoyed it. But my time was done playing. So I wanted to still be around the game of basketball, and I decided to want to coach. So I decided to coach. But when I won the player of the year and comeback player of the year in the D League, that was my last chance. I really wanted to try to make it to the NBA. So I went to the D League and play, and it didn't happen. But I played. I was so focused and I was so determined to get back to the NBA that that's all I was focused on was winning, winning, and playing well, playing well. And I was able to win that award that year for the the Los Angeles Defenders um, be, being the comeback player of the year because of the fact that I wanted to get to the NBA so bad and my, my, my dedication and my focus was so sharp at that moment, even though I was an older player, but that was my goal and I was trying to get there and I was able to win an award and we lost, by one, we lost one game in the finals and, um, to, win the, to win the championship. But I enjoyed it. I, I walked away from the game of basketball on a high note and uh, you know, I was, I was satisfied with the way I left the game of basketball. And then I decided to start coaching right after that. It's so important to have goals in life. We should have all the time, as I used to say, and you need to be focused to achieve them. This is, yeah, this is mean, really, really important. It's really important. If you want to achieve I was, anything, I think if you want to achieve anything, as long as you put your mind to it, you know, you put the dedication. And of course, like you said, you work hard, then any of these things can happen for any kid, any person. 30 years old, 40 years old, 20 years old, 15, like it can happen, but you just got to have that sharp focus and that dedication. And then that you, because only you can control it. Only I can control yes. me going, to, you know, comeback player. You can control what you can control. Other yeah. people help. But at the end of the day, when you wake up and you tell yourself, yeah. I'm going to do this, anybody who's helping, they're just helping. But you already told yourself that you're focused and you're determined to go make this happen. And I think for my career and myself and all phases of life, that's what happened. I had people who didn't think I would do this, and I used that as my motive, more of my motivation to prove to myself, but also yeah. to prove to the people who were saying, like, I don't know, I don't think so. I used that as, as motivation to go ahead and keep me to stay super focused and locked in on to whatever I wanted to achieve at that moment. That's good. You should believe and believe and have your self-confidence. It's very important. And believe that it's possible. Yeah. This is this is life. Life is a chain of experience. Yes, yeah. right. That experience, you know, every single day. But we need to believe in things and have goals all, all the time and always. This is interesting. Well, who is your favorite player to play with and why? Talking about basketball. Favorite player to play with and why? Oh man. I play with a lot of good. I play with a lot of good players. I play with a lot of good players. I'm gonna say the best player I played with was gonna be Rondo. I'm gonna go with Rondo. I'm gonna say Rajon Rondo. Um, you know, he. I was one year older than him when I played with the Celtics. He was younger, but I just, you know, playing with him, he was so smart to be a a younger player that I enjoy. He's okay. seen things maybe five seconds before, you know, the next person did. And I think as a young player, I was already a rookie. He, I mean, I was a second year. He was a rookie. But just seeing the way he picked up things quickly. And then after I left Boston and went to Minnesota, he still was with Boston, to see how he just gradually became better and better up until today. He's still playing today right now. And he still wanted to meet one of the premier guard point guards in this in the, in the NBA because of his just knack for the game and the way he just knew how to play the play the game he was one of my favorite players even though he was a younger player at the time but I played with you know Kevin Durant you know Paul Pierce Russell Westbrook Chris Paul Blake Griffin I played with a lot of great players but it was something about Rondo when I started playing with him that I just I just loved to play with him and every time I was on the court it was just like me and him had a connection. It was just like he's seen things happen quickly. And I just, you know, I thought he was one of the, one of my better, you know, teammates to play with. And just the way I just knew the game, the way he knew the game of basketball was kind of exactly how I knew the game of basketball. And I think that's what drew the connection. 
all of them, they are great names of basketball. But how do you how do you define competition? It means there are a lot of competition between you, all of you. Yeah, you know, I, competition. You know, I, I take competition as you know, I do with any of my family members, my cousin who's here with me now, any my daughter, if we outside, you know, shooting hoops, I want to win at all at all costs. Everybody does though. You and whatever you do, I'm sure you do. My cousin, like I said, so yeah, competition is something that, you know, you just want to be the best in everything, no matter what. If it's like who can run from here to across the street faster, I, I want to try it. I want to challenge. I want to, <laughs> I want to be part of the game. And I don't know if that's just because of I've been playing basketball so long or it's just like something I have. If we're playing cards, if we're playing flip a quarter, heads or tails, you know, I want, I'm going to bet that I'm going to get more right than you. It's just, it's just something that I just, you know, that I think we all have. <laughs> Some people are just like, it's only a game. I don't care about it. But anything that is a choice, it's A or B or it's heads or tails, or I, I want to, I think I'm going to be smarter than the next person. So I'll say, I'm challenging. I, I'm, I'm, I'm down for the competition. So gotcha. I just think it's part of every person and, and everyone is it's in everyone. <laughs> good. Very good. Who inspire you most in your life? Nowadays, who inspire you? Okay, M you know, my mom was my role model. She's my, she's, she's my number, she's my role model. And through the sport of basketball, my favorite was Michael Jordan. So my mom, just the way she, she handled herself every day. And then the ba basketball player is Michael Jordan because he was, you know, he still is to me the best player ever. So it's just like, I want to be the best. And the only way I could be the best is kind of study what the best is doing. And I only get my work, work ethic and my determination from my mom because I see that every day. So those two are, uh, you know, my most influential and people I, you know, uh, impact people in my, in my life. As a young kid, that's who it was. Good answer. Mom is all in mom. Good yeah, mom's answer. always mom number, is one. number one. Number one. <laughs> how, do you, how do you spend your, your free time? What are your hobbies? My hobbies, well, I, with the five-year-old baby, every, anything she wants to do, I have to do. So I, I ride bikes a lot. <laughs> I go to the park a lot. Uh, you know, um, I, for me personally, besides that, I play the video game a little bit, and I play cards. I like to play cards. So I play any type of card games. Those are like my hobbies is playing cards and playing video games. And I love to play golf now. So I'm a golfer now. So oh, good. I play golf. So basketball, I'm still okay. I'm still okay. When I come to Newport <laughs> Islands, we'll play with all the kids. I'll play with all the kids. But I play Your golf. invitation. Your invitation. He's already on table to come to I heard, Yeah, I know. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to get, we're gonna get to that. We want, want you here soon. <laughs> I know. I know. So we are going to organize everything for you. You know, you are going to organize. Don't worry about anything. We are going to organize everything for you. You want to you here soon. Gonna take, uh, uh, you know, we'll talk about this with Kiko and all of you to, to arrange. Yeah, yeah, me and Kiko okay. will talk. We want you here. Recording. You will love Cabo Verde. What was the best time in your life? The best time was, the best time in my life was my, I want to say getting drafted, becoming a professional athlete, because that was one of my first dreams. And then mm -hmm. I want, you know, of course, having my own family and having my, uh, you know, my own uh, kids as well. So those are my, th those, Those are my two most, you know, impactful moments in my life is being drafted to play the sport I love to play and what I work very hard to, you know, become a professional athlete. And then, you know, being a father and uh, being able to, you know, share these, you know, my, my visions, share my, uh, you know, what happened in my career, my life, and then pass that down to my kids. And hopefully they, they can become uh, not basketball players, but whatever – Whatever they want to become, they I want them to know. I want them to know that I was five years old. I was 12 years old, and I wanted to play basketball, and I kept working and practicing and practicing and practicing, and then my dream came true. So if my daughter wants to be a dancer, you got to keep practicing and practicing and practicing and practicing, and you become, you know, Beyonce or whoever you want to become. And if my other daughter wants to be whatever, whatever, I just want to let them know my story and how it happened for me, and it wasn't those, oh, you got lucky or – You know, I just not, no, I had to do the same things that all the kids have to do, but you just got to, like you said, you have to have that self-confidence and you have that yes. focus all Hard the time. Work. All, like, uh, consistently. All the time. So that's what I'm trying to, you know, that's what I want to, you know, instill into them. Not be me, 
But if whatever you want to be, keep practicing at it and keep believing that you can be comfortable. Support them, support them, and let them know that yes, they should believe in their self. And yes, it's possible. I think this is this is very important. Very, very good. Finish this center for me, please. Ryan Anthony Gomez is who is Ryan Anthony Gomez? Ryan Anthony Gomez Gomes <laughs> is a you know Gomez for us is Gomez. Listen, Gomez. Listen, I, you know what? When I come to the islands, we're gonna get this under control. You know, so many people a lot of people call me Gomez. And then I say, it's not a Z. And they say, no, no, X is Gomez. And I say, oh, I thought it was Gomez. It's Gomez. I look, Gomez. I, look home, I look at home and I say Gomes. I mean, Holmes, and I say Gomes. <laughs> we'll get it. When we come, when I come to the islands, we're going to clarify if I got to put a little dash over the S. Oh, well, yeah. oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, well. <laughs> but I say Brian Anthony Gomes is a... Great father and a Good. exceptional basketball Kate Verdian basketball player. That would be my yes, two, Kate that, would, that would that would be my my two things I would say about myself because as of right now I played basketball and I'm and I'm done. Uh, you know I retired so I'm done. So that's who I am, who I was and currently I'm just, I'm a dad. I'm still a dad. My kids are young. They're not at the age where they're adults yet, where it's like, my job's done with that. So those are the two mm -hmm. things that, you know, we talked about the most here so far. And mm -hmm. that's who I am as a person. Like if I, if, if, you know, I don't play ball, basketball anymore. No so, hey, Ron, you used to play NBA, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you doing now? I ain't nothing. ain't got any kids yet. I'm a dad. I got two kids. So, you know, conversations is just like that right now. Um, so that's what I would say about myself. Great father and an exceptional Cape Verdean basketball player. This is why we are so proud of you. <laughs> this means this, this is strong once again. This is so strong. Let us talk about your roots, this lovely and fascinating country, which is Cabo Verde, a country of marabes and opportunities, and of course, open to the world, strategically well located, with a lot of access. Well, we have all the conditions for opportunities, for investments, for tourism, for visitors, for you diaspora to come. We want all of you here, you know, for our visits, come and bring your family, your, you know, all your friends also. What do you think talking about your country, talking about uh, this is your roots, what does this country, its culture and its heritage mean to you? Uh, you know, it means a lot to me. And uh, to be totally fair and honest, the more I, I've grown as an adult is the more I realize, you know, who I am as a Cape Verdean person. So, you know, as a young kid, you know, we all young and just, my name is my name. I'm just out here having fun, running around, you know, not really yeah. probably identifying who you really are. Um, and then up until probably the last, you know, I always knew I was Cape Verdean, but I mean, as far as learning about Cabo Verde and the islands and the volcano and all that stuff, and, and everything that's going on there, I learned that I got more information from my family members who traveled and been over there frequently over the last five to six years. So, uh, you know, I always know who I am, but I'm still, as a Cape Verdean person, learning about my heritage and learning about my roots and who I really am. And that's why I'm so intrigued and want to come to the islands to be physically there because, you know, I've been in the U.S. my whole life. So I don't know... I know who I am, 65% of, of me maybe, but I don't know until I, come to, to, I come over there to really understand who I am. I know who my great grandfather was, I know my family who lived there, but I don't, I probably have family, I know I have family there that I haven't even met, that I don't even, you know, I can't right. connect the dots. So I want, I want to be there so I can fully experience who I really am. But I, uh, you know, I, I'm representing the Cape Verdean people proudly. Uh, when I was in California, we had games where 300 people came. When I was in Boston, it's I was so in important. So, yeah. but to touch my roots of the people who are on the grounds there in Cape Verde, yeah. that's what I want to do. So I important. think that goes more than just people knowing, you know, Ryan Gomes is an NBA player who's Cape Verdean. He's, but he's in, you know, never physically seen me, never been yeah. there. The value for me coming is going to be more for me 
but it's probably going to mean more to them if you get what I mean because I, I never you know I don't know who I really am until I come there and I really see yeah. the ocean I really and see the beaches, and I see the volcanoes and I see the people and you know they want to meet you they want to see you you know gonna, you're gonna feel you know different special yes believe me and you're I played, feel special. And I, And I played against Walter Tavares, who's Cape Verdean, who I've talked to plenty of times, who's, who, who lives yes. here, who comes there frequently. Eddie Tavares, yes. Yep, Walter. Eddie Tavares. So I've talked to him. Joel Almeida, who, who went to the same high school I went to here in Connecticut. Wow. Here in Connecticut. So there's people that, like I said, that I've talked to, that I know that are from there, that saying, you need to come back. And I'm like, I know I want to come back. I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back. But now's the time. <laughs> and now's the time for me to come back. I'm not playing anymore. I have more free time. I have more time to really observe and really understand myself too. Back in the day, you know, trying to become a professional basketball player and just focusing on that so solely. And like I said, the determination of just, you know, making sure I could, I could get a good career in the NBA. That was only my own, my, my own, uh, uh, what do you want to say? My own, now I want to say selfishness, but I was like, there'll be a time for me to do that. But Not now, first. where I'm done retiring, I have nothing but ample time to come make a difference as well right now because yes. I have free time to do that. That's what Huge I want to do. Now I think the time is valuable for me to come over and see what opportunities are there for oh, myself for and us. are there for the people so we can kind of make some changes and see what things yeah. can benefit everyone. And that's what my, oh, my goal will be when I come over there. Good. We are already programming your visit to Cabo Verde. Soon. Let us see next year this, you know, what is happening this post-COVID. Uh, we are going to programming and organizing with that. We, I'll see with Kiku and with you, of course, to come to do a, a very, to visit different islands. You know, to yeah. feel, you're going to feel special. You're going to feel completely different. Yeah, the you know. With this uh, question. Yeah. Is, my, is, is, yes, yes, go ahead. No, no, I was going to say, my cousins have been going over, like I said, the last five or six years, so. They got, they got a, they, they, they told me I'm going to have a grand old time when I get there. So I'm so yeah. excited to come out there. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I, I, so they tell me to come for the festival though. That's when they tell me to come for the festival. Yes. The festival is also, you know, our culture music is a lot. This, this is, it's going to be a great time. The festival going to meet a lot of people here, walk around. It's a sense of, uh, Cabo Verde, Africa, war. it's different, yeah. it's unique. <laughs> yeah, that's why, that's, believe that's me, what, believe but, me. But for me who never, who, who know, I'm Cape Verdean, but never seen that and never experienced that, that's what I, that's what I want to see, because I want to understand yeah. more of me, more of myself. Of I course. think it's going to help me understand who I really am and not yes, think about, I know myself, you know, you know, by being around the, the people of the Cape Verde Islands. We are going to prepare for you this this is this is special visit to Cabo Verde. In your opinion, and linking with what we talked you know, a few minutes ago, what can Cabo Verde do to attract more uh, uh, Cabo Verde descendant to return and invest in Cabo Verde? And what what were your expectations, you know? How what we, we should do to attract more all of you to come to visit but to invest also to create opportunities and to make partnership, you know. You have huge networking there. So how can you link this in a vision of win-win situation? I, I think, uh, you know, me, like I said, since I've never been there, I, I don't want to say, you know, too many things that I don't know what's going on. But I think for me as an individual, I think someone needs to, go, like myself, got to go over there and drag everybody else with them. Like if I, if I was to go over there, like when I do come over and I experience and I see all the things, Then I can say, I went there physically with my, myself. I went there and I seen these things and I could pass the information on to other people. And then hopefully the next time they just come along with me because no one I think is, from what I know, has said, like, come over here with me the next time. Besides my, besides my, my family members who I just said that have been going over there. But I think for, for the, everyone else, it might take someone to go over there and then to create something to have more people interested to coming over there. So hopefully I can be the difference maker when I do come over there and entice people and have people come over and understand how beautiful and how many great things are going on and how up, on the way up Cabo Verde is going. So hopefully that attracts more, you know, Cape Verdean Americans and more just Cape Verdeans yeah. to come visit who are living yeah. just here in 
Connecticut and Boston and mm-hmm. Houston had never been there. Maybe it takes it's going to take someone to show a good experience to have other people say, you know what, I'm going there next year to see how it is, and then maybe that changes the vibe and changes the the aura it's of how people look at it. It's your change. It's your because change. Because you know, we, I'm you know, I don't. That's what I'm saying. I haven't seen anything to say. Oh well, this is the reason why no one's coming, or this is why they should be coming. You do know, you, you get what I mean? So when I go there, I'm going to be able to. I'm going, I'm going to bring my all my recording devices so I can have everything I need to show everyone to get them to support and come back with me. That's good. It's going to happen. Believe believe me. You close. Just give us your closing message to the people of Cabo Verde. Uh, Our message, people. What I would say is that, you know, I want you guys to know I am uh, happy and thankful to be a Cabo Verdean. I don't think that the things that I've accomplished wouldn't have came through the support of the Cabo Verdean families. Uh, my my own Cape Verdean family, and then all the support that I had from the people from around the world that I did never even met that was just happy that a Cape Verdean player was doing well in Providence. And then a Cape Verdean player got drafted after Dana Barrows to the Celtics. And then another, then then all the things, all the prayers, and all the support that was gathered around from all the people that's watching this, or all the people that's at the islands. I thank you, and I and I really appreciate all that support. And I'm going to give. All the things that you gave me, hopefully I can instill those things back into you guys when I come to Cabo Verde um, and we do wonderful things. Thank you so much, Ryan Gomez. Your life counts. This is the new connection we want for the future.